Oh, Bennett. Um, hello, good afternoon. Um, slightly late again. I had a phone call from a friend. Um, oh, hello, Jules. Yes, a phone call from Lyndon. And she said, I said, I can't be on long because I've got my live video. And she said, what, do people watch it? And I went, yeah, she said, it must be like, she said, I haven't, I haven't actually seen one yet, but it must be like watching paint dry. So I said, I don't think you're a candidate for one of my viewers anyway, so go and muck out your stables. Hello, Marianne, Ray, Jules, Dawn. Another glorious day. Hello from the sunny garden. If it's sunny, you won't be able to see the colours in the painting. Keen as mustard. I like that. Wendy Rowell is watching. I hope you've got something other than just your blue paint this time. Hello, Joanne. Hello, Heather and Tracy and Irene. Oh, it's lovely having you all here. And look, I've got a nice... Oh, God, it's not one of my mugs. But while we're on the subject, I did pour it out of one of my lovely teapots. And I quite often get asked whether whether they pour nicely. Well, look, I'll jolly well show you. They do. Look, absolutely no dribbling. Whoop, there we are. Just a quick slurp. This is, um, this, this mug here is a friend of mine's. Oh, it's in reverse. Anyway, Jack Lowe, he runs something called the Lifeboat Project and he goes around every single lifeboat station, RNLI uh, station in the whole of the UK, um, doing photographs and stuff like that. And he does my fine art scanning. That's Jack Lowe, he's amazing. I think I'm the only person who does it for though. Right. Today, I hope you've got your paints ready. Hello, Diane Johnson, Maria, Cooper, I love that hound's teapot. We've got them in flowers and hair and ducks and something else. Irene checking in, think I'm gonna run out of paint. Not just you. Okay, so I've got a few things for today. I thought we'd finish a few things. And um, I started something today Hi, Marianne. I'm in the queue outside. The queue? I've never had to queue to go into Brock's Bushes. Um, so I started this. That was that was when we did the other day. But um, I thought we'd start another cockle facing forwards. Now, you've already seen how I've done this, those of you who have been watching. So I'm going to tip the... Um, Hello, Hilary. How are you? Have you still got a spare lid? I have got a spare lid, Joanne. I could stick it in the post. Um, be better if you brought the teapot over and then we can make sure it fits. Uh, Karen Dixon, hello. Hello, oh, lovely people. Hello, Anne Johnson and Jenny and Malcolm. You lovely, lovely people. <laughs> right. I'm going to tip you now. Hang on to your hats. So here, oops, here's the cockerel. I'm going to do a bit some more on the tail feathers, uh, the eye and the beak and the legs. And if you remember, this is all just done with a um, big brush, like that. Annaline, spot the daily brooch, quite a Ah, oh, see that on there? That. The company that I buy my lovely sketchbooks and things from is... Um, has another company called Pink Pig and once this came in with my order I'm going to ask for some more. Right, tail feathers. Now something that's rather nice to do when you've got a painting that's dry is just say to yourself okay well they're dry I'll just paint over the top and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to mix up some Some of my alizarin crimson and um, and a bit of Payne's grey and start I'm just going to pretend those ones are not there
adding a bit of depth of colour while it's still wet, which is uh, really, really good fun. Oh, I got some very, very nice paintings messaged to me yesterday. I got some from some children and I got some from some adults. And some of you are doing rather well. A little bit hot on my heels, actually. So I'm trying to um, like build up this sort of quite glorious um, Helen Henderson trying to get swatty knickers. Caitlin Rogerson shouldn't be this be x-rated painting things like that oh <laughs> so i'm surprised nobody has asked how poor little sweet marv is my little dog who's had something of a catalog of health related issues recently with diabetes and um and do something else here diabetes and then lameness yesterday no, the day before yesterday well yesterday he just wasn't looking great and then he has like gunk in his eyes he's got gunky eyes and I was like oh god maybe you know maybe he's just like T trying to tell me something but they did get a little bit le better later on um, so I haven't actually had to take him to the vet today he's such a sweet little dog I mean he's not he hasn't got much in the way of character but he would just never do anyone any harm he's not feisty or bitey Beginning to build up. Hello, Lissy Catherbell. Cold tea for eyes. Yeah, cold tea. Might try that, John Shield. Who's got funky eyes? Oh, 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 funky eyes. Gunky eyes, Annie Palmer. I hope I'm going to um, be able to swap some books with you later. Some of us are very literary. And Annie Palmer's got a nice Kate Atkinson book I haven't read yet. And Joe Nesbo, who writes like hideously scary murder, murder in Scandinavia type books. I read The Snowman and it just made me sweat with fear. I think I've read another one of his as well. I like Kate Atkinson. Right, so I quite like this going on. Hello, Ben Everett. How are you? I'm moving you all up. Lamb's Tales. <laughs> Margaret Woodbrook Harding. Gonna do the beak. Oh gosh, just try to get use a paintbrush that's got loads of um, blue on it. going on there. Paul Knox, do you ever do corgis? You can be quite irritating, Paul. Do, have I ever said that? Have I ever mentioned that you can be quite irritating? Oh, my daffodils nearly fell over. I'm going to do the eye. It's got to be quite a, quite a good colour. And you see, I've let the red go bone dry because otherwise this wouldn't work. Where's that nice brush? 
So now we've almost got a sort of design going on here. And I'm just thinking about like feathers and and what I might do. I quite like doing things that are a bit of a contrast. So I'm going to do something here. Maybe a bit more. Not that contrasting, but It's really just playing with shapes, shapes and colour. Using the fact that the underneath wash, this bit here, is bone dry, so I can sort of do what I like here. Nice. Um, I'm going to do something to these feathers. Oh! Now then, I haven't introduced you to one of my favourite brushes. This cost about a pound from the Chinese supermarket years and years ago. I've got some other ones. Like Chinese brushes are very, very cheap if you go to the right place for them. They don't last all that long. Look at that one. And that one's got a bit too much going on down there, so you use that. But this one, this... This one here, one I just put in the water. It's got a very, very um, pointy point. So I'm going to use that to add some sort of interest or depth to the. Um, I think it's called the cape. That bit that that bit that um, this bit. Keith Sykes, hello, Jonathan, that's Thomas Raw. Whoa, Thomas Raw, those are the days, weren't they? How are things in Norway? That's where Thomas Raw lives and has lived for 40 years. Oh, sorry, I forgot you can't see a thing. I'm, not, I'm neither talking nor painting. See, I've just been adding a little bit of depth there. I'm going to do something like that here as well. So this brush is lovely for things like this. I don't know whether you can something to my left arm. I broke it a few years ago and uh, I didn't really wait for it to heal before using it again more than maybe I should have and I got such a rocket off the woman Jamie Keep who some of you will know who said it'll never heal correctly after you did that and she was right so it sort of seems to click out of place and I have to perform a rather eccentric manoeuvre to get it to do what I want it to do. I don't know whether it's like a tendon travelling through a little tiny hole somewhere in the joint, but good old Janie Keep. Oh, God, look at that. See, paint. That's why I wear just grey. Except when I go out. I'm not going to spend all our time, our precious time together. I'm not going to spend it all on this cockerel. I've got a couple of other things. But I rather like what's going on there. I'm going to do a little bit more. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And it really gives 
gives a sense of these these lovely feathers around the cockerel's neck. And while it's wet, a bit more. Gonna do the legs. If I can find a, a suitable size brush. Line them up. Never mind. Now I've run out of paper. To be honest, I would have the feet down to here, but that isn't going to happen. Sort of giving an idea. Right, shall we move on from that? Now then, it's getting towards the time of year where I start looking for bearded irises. I absolutely love bearded irises. And that is a painting I did a while ago that was made into a card. Look at it closely. So I started one this morning. I'll give you an idea. Say hi to Connie. She's loving the country. Hello, Connie. Sorry about it. Hello, Anne Rastel. Hello, John Loons again. Hayden McDonald. Hello, Hayden. Marianne Ray. So you're just having a chat amongst yourselves. Am I just like a conduit? Move the camera. Like that. Right. So, bearded iris. Most gorgeous flowers. This is all bone dry now, so what I often can't do in a sort of demo like this is show the next stage because because it's too it's it's too wet. So I'm just getting a, a fairly pointy little brush. I could do the pointier one. I'll just send away for some more. All those brushes and not a single one that's any use to me. So here's my French Ultramarine. I'll add a little bit of alizarin crimson just there. I know you're not supposed to, but... Check the colours okay. And just... Obviously, I've spent a lot of time looking at these flowers and how the veins, how the water um, travels through the petals or whatever. Move the camera. Tracy Turner, thank you. I'm really enjoying your videos and chat. You've inspired me to have a go. Super. Hello, Jane. Da -da -da -da. Hooray, I love irises. Paul Knox is them. Paul, you know perfectly well them's not tulips. I'm still trying to go quickly because uh, as my <clears throat> ex-friend said, it's like watching paint dry. But before I started watching, uh, started doing this, I happened to come across a yoga video and I have to say I think even I would struggle to remain amused by that. I was watching thinking oh, I'll get some really good tips for keeping people entertained. <clears throat> Steady with the vibration. Okay. This is my Payne's Grey, the controversial one. I've heard people say, oh, I wouldn't use Payne's Grey. 
I just couldn't care less what people say. Um, so you sort of get an idea about how that petal has come up and flopped over. And then there's the one here. Oops, sorry, can you see? I wish I had a real one here to look at. And uh, we've tried growing them here. And what bearded irises, irises really, really like is um, boiling hot sun on the, um, I don't know whether they're called tubers or rhizomes, but the roots anyway. And number one, we don't really get much of that sort of thing around here. Hot baking sun. It's more of a bog. I should just focus on something like having a bog garden. Uh, I quite often turn pictures round while I'm painting them because it's easier and it flows better. It's more natural for my for my hand. My poor damaged hand. I damaged both my thumbs in one incident in February in Ireland. And they're still both very, very sore here and here. Steady with vibration. Uh, do you draw a very faint design first? Nope. It's like, ha <laughs> ha, Lyndon. Oh, Ros, how are you? That horse is still alive, you know. It's as fat as anything. Um, I thought it was called Storm, but it was called Dawn. It was just a... A misunderstanding. We are gripped. Well, my friend, who said it must be like watching paint dry, is now watching. And I can tell you something, it is not as boring as yoga videos. You'd have to be desperate, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, sorry for any yoga teachers there. So, Beginning to get a sense, a little bit, but preferable to doing <laughs> preferable to doing my accounts, which is the alternative. Yep, I'd say so. Um, right. So I'm now going to do the petal on the other side, but obviously we won't be able to do more than just the petal because it does need to dry. Right, so it would come up and then round. Oop, I'm missing some warmth. But that doesn't matter because it's still wet. Can add it. Uh, somebody just said, do you do a faint outline? No, why would I? It's the same hand-eye coordination and, uh, you know, the brush does a very nice job by itself. Um, so that gives um, a sense of that petal there. I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush to do the um, where it all comes out of the where they will come out together. Oops, got a hair going on there. So yeah, anyway, Mars eye seems all right today, thank goodness. And a bit like the daffodils, they have this lovely, uh, how do you describe it? A lovely sort of papery, papery casing that the flower comes out of. Oh, 
and I'm avoiding that petal so it sort of looks like it's behind it. That'll be the stalk. So I'm hoping that it's looking like it's coming together. Exquisite. Oh, Heather, you're so nice. Request for future session. Please wear special swimming costume that Bad Santa gave you. Bellingham Pet Shop's watching. Jules, that's a disgusting swimming costume. I will wear it if you like, but it'll be over the top of my clothes. Bellingham Pet Shop, Betty. Ah, oh, Betty, lovely Betty. How are you? Ross. Huge, Hugh, thanks. Hugh, thanks, another top. Hmm. It's quite interesting, actually, apart from the, the list of your injuries. It's a miracle. I'm, I'm, the, the word I can't see is probably still sad. It's them purple daffodils. Paul Knox, stop it. You're taking the mick. No, it's quite nice. I quite like that. I'm going to just, while it is wet, I am adding a bit of depth of colour there. And a bit there too. Where's that nice brush? And what I could do while we're on. Oh, that's awful. I don't like that. When I said that's awful, I don't like that. What I don't like is like a lot of thick paint that goes like that. No, that's all right. Whatever I did before. It was, the paint was almost solid, a bit like that. And I don't like it. Um, that color's not so great, but never mind. And I'm going to try and I'm going to give you an idea about how I might paint a bud like that. So I'm just going to put that there so I can actually see it. Where's that brush gone again? Loving these. I am inspired. Oops, sorry. I noticed you. I'm not going to. I'm not going to answer, Lyndon. Right. It's been too long just like trying to get the colour exactly right. I'd probably normally spend a little bit more time on the colour. And these are just beautiful. I love um, the the uh, the bearded irises, but they have a very very short short time, and flowers you just got to paint them when they're in front of you. I'm going to put a touch. And here, oh, that's my tummy making noises because I haven't had any breakfast. Don't eat breakfast usually. I just don't get hungry until a bit later in the day. But it does mean we get quite a lot of rumbling. So 
get the idea there, I hope. Can't really do much more to that now because it's wet. Next thing. Oh yeah, we started this little let what time is it? Oh! The time nobody said, look, don't let your tea get cold. It's too late outside. I'm loving these videos and entertaining commentary and ah, oh, they're all so nice. So are you wetting the paper first there? Do you mean there? Yes, I wet the paper first there. Ignore it, I'm not gonna answer it. So what I was trying to do was paint a flower bud or the top of the flower, I'll just show you here. So I'd paint the shape maybe with a brush like that. And what I want it to do is have green at the bottom and then blend up into the blue. Of the bud. But I'd really want them to join. Oops. So does is, does that sort of answer the answer the question? And then when uh, it's bone dry or when it's nearly dry, I'd probably put a bit more depth of colour here and a bit more at the tip. And then I can use that tiny little brush to pick out the veins, and that will give it form. It's quite it's quite um, lovely how you can how that can work. God, hasn't time flown? And um, I've only done very modest. Product placement. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's quite lush, actually, isn't it? That that's like really there's something quite lush about that. Um, do the Marilyn's watching. I think that's enough painting. We'll have a look at that next time. I've got to go to the post office anyway. I've got a massive sack full of stuff to get away. And um, the village post office is only open twice a week. One of those days is a Monday. Yesterday was a Monday. So I kind of rack my brains and work out how to get it somewhere without having any contact with anyone whatsoever. Um, product placement. Oh, here are some lovely, lovely mugs. All of which are for sale on my website. Somebody asked if I could paint a pheasant, maybe tomorrow. Oh, and look, here's a lovely guinea fowl one. And they're fine bone china. They're very nice to drink out of. Nicer than that heavy old thing. Mmm! There is a lovely mallard one. And we painted one of these earlier this week. Somewhere. And it's either vanished or I painted on the other side. Um... So yes, all sorts of lovely things on my website. Oh, now then, the best paint I have ever watched. I thank you, God, tomato cheeks again. Hello, Elaine, you're back. Um, so yesterday I had a brainwave and that was to put on my website a section called Lockdown Gang. Um, so if you go to the website, which is www.marogers.com, marogers.com, uh, and you go to shop, there's now a sub, apartment and it's called the lockdown gang and in there I've just put um, instead of like putting an item and a description like bone china mug really lovely with a pheasant on etc etc I've just put um, the paints I use where I get them from the paper I use where I get it from the think the colors I use and I've also put there's a discount code just for you no, shh just for you and it's called lockdown capitals and I'll pay the post and package if you do that now I know one or two of you have already ordered some stuff and I am doing a refund for the ones from yesterday um, so if you can't work it out I'll work it out anyway massive sack full <laughs> I bet Helen Henderson loves how you say Bone to God, you're so naughty. Look, you've had you've had enough of my time. You've had more than enough of my time. It's been a delight. I've just woken up. Elaine Carmichael. 
Oh, oh no, I was just getting into it. Right, maybe see you tomorrow, but I will put a sort of reminder up on my page. Okay, bye, have a lovely day.